that conference. May God richly bless you. May it come back tenfold. River of life. Amen. Brother Summer has already left, so you want to give more? Praise God. Matthew 28. Wednesday night Bible study. Brother Hobson is going to be bringing the word. I know that's going to be good. You want to be there for that. Amen. Matthew 28, verse number 16. And then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. I don't ever want to be included in that number. And some doubted. But Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. There's no S on that. It's a singular word. Name of the Father. Name of the Son. And name of the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't have time to get into it, but if you read John chapter number 14, it will tell you what that name is. Does anybody happen to know it? I am a father. I am a son. I am a pastor. I am an uncle. That's not my name. That just puts me in the right column for that particular moment. My name is James Blackshear. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And so this was told to the disciples by Jesus himself. And let me tell you what they did. They left there. We get into Acts. And guess what they did? They did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They went and began to teach the Bible. They began to teach the cross. They began to teach salvation. Then Peter gets up and he begins to preach. And you know what they did? They baptized about 3,000 people that day. And then we get to Acts chapter 8. We get to Acts chapter 10. We get to Acts chapter 19. You know what they did? They started baptizing people. They started converting people. How did they baptize them? They baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not really my message, but I feel just a little pause right here to explain it to you a little clearly. Jesus didn't say, go and repeat this. He said, go and do this. And so the disciples left and they baptized every convert in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to preach to you today this simple subject, go ye. Go ye. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, dear God, that your word is already anointed. I pray that that anointing would rest upon every listener today, that your anointing speak through me today. Let, oh God, our spirits be connected with your word today. And let there be impartation from your word into this congregation in Jesus' name. Give the Lord one more clap of praise. Praise God. Hey man, you're welcome to be seated. The good news is I have a flight to catch, so you're in good luck today. I believe more than I have ever believed it before in the history of my life that we are the bride of Christ, period. I don't even think it needs to be a discussion. I don't even think it needs to be uh, 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 documented uh, through debate. I just am convinced that the people that I'm speaking to, along with millions of people around this world that believe this apostolic message, they are 
the bride of Christ. I believe it. I believe that we are the church that Jesus was talking about in Matthew 16 or Matthew 13. He said, upon this rock, I am going to build my church. He gave Peter the keys and he said, whatever you bind, I'm going to bind. Whatever you loose, I'm going to loose. I believe that this is that church. doesn't stop here. We're just a part of it. It's all over the world. There are millions and millions of people that believe this message just like you and I do. And I am completely convinced that God has chosen in the last days, in these days that Brother Farmer was talking about, he has chosen you. He's chosen you. You might say, well, I'm not a preacher. Who said anything about that? You're a part of the bride of Christ. You're a part of the body. You're a part of the church. And God has chosen you to go into the world and preach the gospel. He's chosen to work through human beings, mankind, to do the greatest work of eternal value. I also believe that we are in the very last of days. Just yesterday, after we had our time of fellowship, I got home and I looked on the news uh, app on my phone, Fox News, and, and, and the very first thing I saw was mass shooting. Texas, nine people killed. You scroll a little bit further, it's another report of the end time. You scroll up a little bit more, it's another report of the end time. I don't need to talk about the time that we are living in. I think now we are completely convinced that these are the last days. These are the days that Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24. There's going to be war. There's going to be rumor of war. Anybody ever hear of rumors of war? They're talking about U.S. and China going to war. They're talking about U.S. and Russia going to war. They're talking about this war and that war. You know what that is? That's a fulfillment of end time prophecy. And we are living in the very end time. I'm here to tell you that the rapture can happen at any moment. There is a day coming when the Lord is going to blow a trumpet. And the saints that have already passed on and they're in the ground. Brother Don, I want to tell you something, sir. Sister Bev is coming out of that ground. She is going to be put back together and we are going to meet her in the air. Just this week, 5 o'clock prayer, I was up here and Brother Don G was the first one here sitting on that front row and I just felt such an impulse in my spirit that he had just buried his sweet wife and put that angel in uh, to, to the ground of, of, of temporary pasture. But there's a day coming when God is going to resurrect her and God's going to put those ashes back together and God is going to allow us to meet her again in the air. The day of the Lord is approaching. The trump of God is going to sound and the church is going to be raptured out of here. Amen. Some people believe that the church is going to go out after the tribulation. If you want to wait around for that, that's far, fine. I'm going in the first call. I said I'm going in the first call. If you want to wait and go through all that business, that's between you and God. I believe that the rapture of the church is going to usher in the tribulation. That's just how I believe it. That's how I believe the scripture teaches it. And then there's going to be a tribulation. And then there's going to be a second coming. The second coming is when you and I and the bride, we come back with the Lord. What am I telling you? It's about going time. It's about time that we understand that it's rapture time. You better be ready. I'm just here to preach to somebody. You better be ready. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. The Lord is getting ready to call his church home. The signs of the times are everywhere. I stay apprised of what's going on around this world. My dearest friend, Brother Nathaniel Haney, is probably one of the most renowned Bible scholars of end time prophecy. 
He goes to Israel multiple times a year. He understands and speaks Hebrew fluently. He is friends with Jewish rabbis, and he has studied this his entire life. And if you were to ask him today who has much more knowledge, he would say the rapture could happen any moment. You better be ready. How do I get ready? Well, I'm so glad you asked. You better repent of your sins. Then Peter said unto them, Acts 2.38, I didn't give many scriptures today, but they're going to flow with me. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. That's how you get ready. And be baptized. Who? Every one of you. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? It's for the remission of your sins not just to join the church. It's not just to have your name written down. It's not just to get a nice baptismal certificate that they'll print for you. It's not just to get your picture on Facebook. It's to get your sins remitted. There is no other way. There is no other name. There is no other method which your sins can be remitted that in that watery grave of baptism. Romans 6 talks all about it. I'm not here to preach about baptism today, but it's hard not to. And then you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's how you get ready for the rapture. That is the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gospel message. And if you are not ready before you leave here today, you can be ready. It seems like every service, people have been getting baptized in Jesus' name. I've already been informed there's somebody that's going to be baptized today. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on is there's a rumbling in the earth. There's a stirring in the atmosphere. People realize that there's a shift happening and they're getting right with God. If you've not repented, don't leave today without repenting. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, does it matter how? Yes, it matters how. It's not in my notes, but I just can't get away from this for some reason today. Acts chapter 19, Paul Verse number one, had a little preach in his spirit. And Paul and Apollos came to, uh, they were at Corinth. And Paul had gone through the upper coast of Ephesus and he found some church folk. Disciples. And so Paul did what Paul does. And he says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you've been going to church? And they looked around and said, we don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean, have we received the Holy Ghost? And he said, well, wait a minute, we got a problem. How were you baptized? Some people say, pastor, it doesn't matter how I was baptized. Paul thought it did. They hadn't received the Holy Ghost. He said, well, we got a problem here. How were you baptized? And they said, well, we were just baptized unto John's baptism. And Paul said, ah, John just baptized unto repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him which is going to come after, which is Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they obeyed. They didn't sit down and have a big long argument that I read. Maybe it's hidden in the scripture somewhere. They obeyed the prophetic utterance of the man of God and they were baptized, rebaptized. I've heard people say, well, Pastor, when I got baptized originally, I was sincere. I believe that. I honestly believe that. If you got baptized as a baby, if they uh, 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 sprinkled water over your head, your parents were sincere. I'm sure they were. If you got baptized at an early age and you didn't really know, I'm sure you were sincere. But does that matter if you were sincere or does it matter if you were obedient? Sincerity is good. But obedience is what's required. And so these disciples, these church people, they said, we are going to get rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Apparently, the method matters. I'm here to tell somebody he's coming. Don't wage your soul on a tradition. Don't wage your soul on what your mother told you, on what your father told you. You better be baptized, and you better be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said he's coming like a thief in the night. Let me tell you something, I don't like thieves. If I know a thief is coming, I promise you, I'm going to wait up. 
And I don't care if you're liberal or conservative or, or, or a Democrat or a Republican, there's going to be a 4570 waiting on you. And let the police worry about it. I don't like thieves. But nobody knows when a thief is coming. Jesus said it's going to be coming like a thief in the night. In other words, you got to be ready all the time. You got to be ready day, morning, noon, and night because the Lord is coming back. I've heard people say, well, after the church is gone, after the rapture, I read in the Bible to where people, they can get saved during that tribulation. Hey, I wouldn't count on it. You know, when the church leaves, grace is gone. Did you know that? The grace that allows you to walk through darkness, that walk through the outpouring of hell that is going on in this world, the grace that allows you to come to an altar and repent of your sin, the intercession of the church makes it possible for the enemy to be held at bay. Do you realize why we feel the presence of God here today? It's because people have been praying. People have been holding back the enemy. You think hell wants you to feel the presence of God today? Do you think hell wants you to feel what you felt earlier in that worship service? No. That's because the church has been praying. The people of God have been on their knees and because of that hell is held at bay. And when the church is gone, hell is going to have a party. And if you're banking on waiting until after the rapture before you get right with God, you've been watching too many Hollywood movies. These movies that they put together, you know, uh, left behind and all this stuff. Hey, you're going to bank your salvation on a Hollywood movie? Or are you going to bank it on what the Word of God says? You better be ready. Morning, noon, and night, you better be ready. The rapture is going to be coming upon us. You better repent of your sins. You better be baptized in Jesus' name. You better be full. I said you better be full of the Holy Ghost. Well, I received the Holy Ghost 20 years ago. That ain't good enough. Sorry about my English, Mom. I know that aggravates you. That's not good enough. You better have been filled today. I don't want to ever go a day without speaking in other tongues, having the Holy Ghost flow outside of me. My wife gets aggravated at me because I don't ever fill up the gas tank until it says ding, 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 ding. Not you have 100 miles left, but it says miles zero. I don't want to get raptured with a full tank of gas. That's a waste of money. <laughs> and so a lot of times I'll wait till the last minute to get gas. I'm learning to be a better husband. I learned that this week. But hey, I'm not talking about running out of gas on the side of the road. You better keep your vessel full. Read Matthew 25. Five were wise and five were foolish. Five were filled with the Holy Ghost and five were lukewarm. The five that were full went. The five that were lukewarm were lost. These were all church folk. In other words, you better stay full of the Holy Ghost. If you can make it to Monday night prayer, you ought to be here and pray through. If you can make it to Wednesday evening worship or Bible study, you ought to be here. If you can make it to Thursday morning, 5 a.m., you, you ought to be prayed up every day. What am I preaching? I'm preaching the rapture's coming. The rapture is upon us. And because of that, the church has got to go. Go ye. Go ye. Jesus said, I'm getting ready to leave. And after I leave, you've got a job to do, church. you got to go. you got to go to the highways. And you got to go to the byways. Let me tell you something. After we come in and we experience that beautiful experience of new birth, water baptism, Holy Ghost infilling, then we've got a responsibility. We've got to go and teach the Word of God. We've got to go and make disciples. That's our job. That's our job. Nothing else really matters but the mission and the commission of the church, the death and the burial and the resurrection. 
And in that order, you notice after your birth, after your burial and your resurrection, there's a job to do. There's an instruction to give. That's what happened with Jesus. He was put in the ground. He was crucified, put in the ground, and then he resurrected, and then he gave some instructions to go. And that's exactly what happens to us. We repent, we're baptized, we receive the Holy Ghost, and then we receive our instructions, and it's to go. Go where? I'll tell you where it is. It's to go to the job and spread the gospel. It's to go to the grocery store and spread the gospel. People misunderstand this verse, and they think, well, i got to go overseas. Hey, don't you think a soul lost in Anchorage is the same value as a soul lost in the Philippines, a soul lost in Africa, a soul lost in Mongolia? A soul is a soul. When it says go, it means go and teach, make disciples wherever you are. Teach all nations. Teach them about Jesus. Mark chapter number 16 is a very important verse, Mark 16, verse number 15. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world. It's the same thing that Matthew said, but Mark says it just a little bit differently. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not, you're not going to get baptized and you're going to be damned to eternity. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They're going to take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it's not going to hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. What am I saying? I'm saying Jesus said go. After you get saved, it's time to go. The job of the church is simple. It's to go. Go to Huffman. Go to Mountain View. Go to Fairview. Go to Girdwood. Go to Chugiak, go to Palmer, go to what? Go to Kiana, go to Norvig, go to Sulawak, go to Am- wherever you go, spread the gospel. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's our job. We got to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to who? To everybody. Everybody. Thank you for starting the Ukraine ministry, Mr. and Mrs. Robbins, I appreciate that so much. It brought over hundreds of people from Ukraine and they implanted them into this city and they're teaching them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They couldn't go over there, so they brought them over here. What about me? What am I doing? I got to do everything I can, no matter where I am, no matter if I am in AIH, Brother Bodie, I got to be telling people about Jesus. When I'm on the job, I got to tell people about Jesus. I heard somebody say it this way. Preach always, use words if necessary. Preach always. Use words if necessary. In other words, let your light shine. People are watching you whether you realize it or not. Let your light so shine among men. Let your light so shine. You might say they're not going to believe what I have to say. You don't know that. The reason God allowed you, some of you to go through some trials and through some tribulations and the reason God allowed some testing to come some of your uh, lives is because now you have a story to tell and now you have a testimony to give. And when you give your personal testimony, nobody's going to, they may argue with my sermon. They may argue with my theology, but when you tell them your personal story, nobody can argue with your personal story. I once was lost. I once was a mess. I was undone. But God, God saved. You should hear Brother Farmer's testimony. He was a messed up man. He was bold. He, he was rambunctious. He told me one time, he was an old Harley rider, rolled with the Hell's Angels. He told me one time that he was so belligerent that he took his Harley and he rode into a bar. And he rode his Harley with straight pipes and flames shooting out the back of those pipes. He rode his Harley into the bar and spun a loop inside the bar and begged anybody to mess with him. Now he just does that for Jesus. (laughs) 
preach always, use words if necessary. You don't have to get up here and scream like me. I'm called to do this. This is my calling. But you know what you're called to do? You're just called to share the love of Christ among people. Go. Ye into all the world. What world? Your world. You probably can't get on a plane with me and go to the Philippines. It's crazy expensive. It's ridiculously expensive. But you worry about your world. People are in your world on purpose. God has placed you where you are on purpose. You're not in that job because you're so smart. God gave you that job because there's somebody, they're lost and they need to hear the story of Jesus and they need to hear it from you. You've got to go to your world. Somebody say, go ye. Come on, say it. Go ye. Go to every creature. I've got a burden today to reach this city. God gave me a burden not too long ago, two or three years ago, to plant churches all across this city. We have got to reach this city. We're going to reach this city by planting churches everywhere. Some of you may not know it yet, but some of you may lead some of those churches. Here's the best way to get started. Get you a Bible study group going in your house. Get you a Bible study group going. Don't wait for me to give you a pulpit. Don't wait to get on the preaching schedule. Find a soul. Find a soul and teach somebody about Jesus. I got a burden to reach this city. Every person in this city, I don't care what color. I don't care what culture. I don't care what gender. Or I don't even care what the gender used to be. Hello. Souls have got to be saved. Souls have got to be saved. I hope they don't look like you. I hope they don't talk like you. I hope they don't dress like you. I hope that they are just lost and undone and they're waiting for somebody to tell them about a man that loved them so much that he went to a cross because they have a hard time believing somebody could love them that much. But yes, somebody loved them so much, but Jesus is not going to come down in the flesh in the morning and walk into your job because he's got you there. He's got you there. And we've got to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go to every creature. Not just the educated, every soul. Not just the American, every soul. Not just the elite, every soul. Not just the clean, every soul. Not just the sober, every soul. Not just the straight, every soul needs to hear about Jesus. I don't care what they look like, go reach them. I don't care what they smell like, go reach them. I don't care what their rap sheet is, go reach them. We've got a job to do. I got to tell my neighbors about Jesus. We got a job to do. I got to tell everybody at the gas station about Jesus. We got to reach people. I said we got to reach people. We got to reach people that are lost because when God stands me up in judgment and he says, what about that one that I put in your life? Well, God, I was having a bad day. It's a soul. Aren't you glad somebody reached you? Aren't you glad somebody told you about Jesus? Sometimes we get all saved and all cleaned up and all put together and we forget where we came from. We forget how bad it was in our life. We forget how messed up we were. Hey, there's 300,000 people out here waiting on somebody to tell them about Jesus. What are we doing about it? What are we doing about it? We got to go into the highway. We got to go into the byway. We got to tell people about Jesus. That's why we paid the bills this month. That's why the baptismal tank is warm. Does it take a lot, a lot of electricity? Yeah, and gas. But maybe somebody wants to be baptized. That's why the lights are on. Do we really need this screen? No. But isn't it nice to have big scriptures on it? That's why we do what we do. It's not for us. 
Whenever this becomes about us, you can look for, an, I'm being nice as I know how to be, but when this becomes about us, you can find another pastor. Because I have a commission and I have a calling to reach lost people. And the reason these lights are on is because this city is on its way to hell. And we got to do something about it. we got to just stop singing to ourselves and preaching to ourselves and, and, and fellowshipping ourselves with people. Read the obituary. People died yesterday. Go into all the world. Which world? My world. I'm finished. I think God's just getting started. Show us, oh God. Convict me, oh God. Let my eyes be open to the people you're putting in my life on purpose. The gas station person, God. The grocery store person. Those people, God, that I just come in contact with. Open mine eyes to see the harvest. Open my heart to love them as you love. Here's what I pray. Here's how I pray. God, let me see people like you. I don't want to be disgusted with their lifestyle. I want to love them like you love them. I don't want to turn my nose at how somebody's living because they don't know everything about you that I do. I just want to love them like you love them. Open my eyes to see. Look at that picture. Thousands, ten thousands of people go into all the world. I'm calling this church to prayer right now. If there's 200 people in this building, there's 200 ministers here. Do you hear what I said? If you have the Holy Ghost, you're a missionary because the Holy Ghost is a missionary spirit. You don't have to quit your job and start traveling and raising money. You just have to go to your job and start raising souls. I'm calling this church into soul winning right now. I'm calling this church to prayer right now. If you're here today and you've never repented of your sins, I'm preaching to you today. I want us all to stand, find a place to pray. If you're here today and you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, oh, I'm so glad you're here today. Go into all the world. Go into all the world.